Batman Begins. Yeah. Okay, so I know you've talked about like work begetting work, and clearly there is. Like if we trace each of these projects to the other, they are linked, right? Yes. As you said. Um, so you were a fan of Christopher Nolan's. Yeah. You get the call, he wants to meet with you to play Batman. Yeah. You knew in your heart of hearts maybe this didn't feel right. But here's my question. How do you prep for an audition when you know you're going to be up for a Batman? Like, do you get the sides in advance? Are you reading the comic books? Do you remember what you did to even prep for that audition? That's a really good question. It's so long ago. Um, I feel like we must have been given sides in and around the, the day of the shoot. We shot on the Warners a lot, I think, and everyone, like, you could see all the, I knew the other guys that were auditioning, and I knew that Christian Bale was the obvious choice, and I knew that, like, I was very, very slight physically back then, and right. I knew that I didn't have that physicality then to kind of do it, but for me, it was just to be able to get in a room yeah. with Chris for Nolan and to be able to say, oh, well, I worked with him, yeah. you know, uh, and that was all I was looking for. Um, and there was a full like they 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 built a set right. and they shot it on thirty five and it was it was a big You're like can I keep this footage because I just shot a film with Christopher Nolan <laughs> technically <laughs> well I think it exists I think the footage oh, exists yeah, yeah. Um, but that was it I, I genuinely was like yeah lovely to meet you guys have a you know good look at the movie and then he called me a week or two later I can't remember and said look it's not going to work out uh, we thought it mightn't but there's this other part. You know what's interesting, like this kind of like house of car like cards or like how one thing changes something else is like I had Gary Oldman on oh, the yeah. podcast recently and he talked about, because I asked him about was he always up for Gordon and he said actually, as he understands it, Chris first wanted him for Scarecrow. Oh really? <laughs> Which again, I can almost see because like it's almost a strange choice to go younger with that character. Yeah. On paper you could see that kind of character be a little bit older, but again, opening your mind and kind of like, oh wait, Maybe Gary makes more sense for this. Kill. It's just it's just fascinating how one thing leads to the other. Yeah, and I think that some like you know Chris has so many feathers to his bow as a director, but I think his skill at casting is something that people don't quite uh, talk enough about. Yeah, he, he's always been genius at casting his films, kind of in an unexpected way. Yeah, you know, uh, and he he kind of he doesn't go the conventional way with with the casting and i think it's always worked out for him there, there are two, two scenes in batman begins that jumped out at me when i was again rewatching it the other day for the 20th time um the scene with you and tom wilkinson is just fantastic oh, yeah. and obviously Poor old tom, yeah. a, little, a little more resonant now that yeah. we've lost the great tom wilkinson yeah. um and also i mean like in kind of like a classic comic book fashion when rachel is kidnapped you kind of take her in and batman kind of comes into the scene um it clearly like it feels like this is the kind of role where you felt some license to have some fun with it, to go big. Yeah. And like, did you feel out on a limb then? Cause you hadn't had this relationship with Chris established yet, but like, you know, your, even your elocution is very precise. You're kind of like leaning in a little bit more than, than some actors might. Um, yeah. But you felt like it, the material warranted it and, and it, it would work for this precise role. Yes. And I, I, I felt like, Right, this is great. He's just like he's an out and out villain. Yeah. You know, it's rare you get to do that and just have a bit of fun. And I remember even that reading of when I call him the Batman, and I remember doing that a bit big. <laughs> yeah. And I went and I thought he's never gonna he's never gonna use that because right. it's a bit. But he he loved it and he put it in and, <laughs> and uh, the Batman. Yeah, yeah exactly. it was like I just thought I'll have a bit of fun with it. Yeah, it's, and the thing I think, you know, with. Um, great directors is you just got to show them stuff yeah and they may or may not like it or they may or may not use it but if you if you show them stuff then it's there rather than just talk about it if you actually just demonstrate it you know yeah i also i love that the end of that sequence you know uh there's some really great moments of humor in that film and you get the great line dr crane isn't here right now but if you'd like to make an appointment oh yeah <laughs> just <laughs> Just works. Um, and also, like, noted that, you know, all these Batman villains we see in these different incarnations, we still have never seen Scarecrow in another film, which I think you should take as a badge of honor. Oh, yeah. That's right. He's, yeah. I, just, didn't, I didn't think about that. Just adding to your quiver of accomplishments. 